Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Machine Dana. I hope you guys are doing really, really well. In this video, it's the second in a three-part series of videos about audio visualizers and adding them to your OBS Studio stream. Now, if you're a Streamlabs OBS user, check out the link in the description below. I will be doing a separate video on how you can add an audio visualizer to Streamlabs OBS. This is specifically for OBS Studio. Now, in the first part of the three-part series here, we learned how to add a basic audio visualizer to your stream using the Spectralizer plugin. And that looked pretty well, okay? That looked kind of a little bit something like, like this, okay? But in this video, I'm going to show you how to make it look a little bit more like this. A little bit more sex and sizzle, okay? So this video is specifically about how you can make the most of beautifying the Audio Visualizer Spectralizer plugin that we added in the first video. Make it look awesome okay we want to make your stream look awesome that's what this is remember we're trying to make you stand out in a world of eight million streamers one man with one audio visualizer took on the world I i'll stick to my day job <laughs> Movie contract inbound. So the third video in the series, which I will also link in the description below, will be then how we can add the artwork to that, the album artwork, and also the title of the song that's being played, just to really round off the other two bits that we've done, the installation and the beautification of it. So hopefully you guys have found this video series useful. I'd really appreciate a like on the video if you have, and definitely some feedback and some comments, any problems you've run into, or just in general, if you found it useful, let me know. I really, you know, I'm, I'm begging for love here. Just give me, give me verification, mainly because the YouTube algorithm. As always, feel free to check me out as well at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana if you're new around here. Without further ado, let's get into part two. So what we're really trying to achieve here is to create multiple filters and masks that can just add a little bit of dynamic visual improvement to the audio visualizer. You did actually transform this by right clicking Click and transform, and we rotated it 90 degrees. So what we're seeing here is like, it's basically as though we're turning our head. So it's not gonna work. So just for the time being, and we can revert it back to that. I'm gonna rotate it back to where it was anti-clockwise. Now we've got the proper orientation set up. All I've done is set this to the correct orientation and make it the full width of the scene in this particular example. I'm gonna press play. That's working fine. We now know what that is. So this height here would be the very top of one of the bars. If it could be at its maximum like volume or whatever, it would hit that very top. So a filter doesn't need to be applied above that. And obviously this line at the bottom is the bottom line as well. So anything below that line also does not need to be added. Here's where we get into a little bit of kind of Photoshop work. But don't worry if you're not a Photoshop buff. I'll show you like a hack of doing this for free using like... The wonderful world of the internet okay what i'm first going to do here is go into the snipping tool which is a tool that should be installed in windows all this will do is take a screenshot essentially define exactly where i want that screenshot to be and i want to basically take kind of like a, a cut of where that screen looks just so i can see exactly where that is positioned and get the aspect ratio right so i'm going to edit copy this open up photoshop and paste that now i'm working on like a 4k monitor so it's actually a lot bigger i'll need to rescale it here this is a 1920 by 1080 canvas that i'm working on so you can see a little bit of clipping there but that's just because i didn't quite get the pixelation right on the uh, on the snip that i did so i'm just going to bring that in a little bit now all we're trying to do here is to create the, the correct canvas size for the filter so that when we apply a variety of different filters we're working on the right canvas and it's not like kind of applying the filter in like a stupid place it's like the best analogy i could give here is if you've got a canvas size that's this big and you try and put a filter that's like that big just over the top of it it's gonna look stupid if you've got a source that's this big you want the filter to be like perfectly over it okay and what we're looking to do here is basically trim out any area that isn't within the filtered area that we want so in photoshop what you can do is image canvas size but you can do this also by just dragging the pixel in the middle of something like paint or something like that i'm going to lock in the very top here to anchor in which means it won't be clipped at the top it'll clip from the bottom and it's the height that i want to take off here let's just start with 350 as the height 
So we need to take off a little bit more. Right, so I'm fairly content here that we've got only the area that we want to mask over within this canvas size. And that's basically giving us the correct aspect ratio for the filter that we're going to be creating. We now basically do not need this image. Now, just briefly to explain what a mask actually is, a mask will basically show or hide an area of the source. Normally, it's like a video or an image source. But in this case, we're using like a dynamic audio visualizer source. And in OBS Studios and Streamlabs OBS, you can add masks to pretty much every source. In this case, we're adding it to the audio visualizer because we want to do some different things like gradients and, and block some things off and add some lines and some other stuff like that and shading. If it's a perfect black, then it will completely hide what's behind it. That's what the mask will do. If it's a perfect white, it will fully 100% show what is behind it. Now the gray area here, it's, see what I did there, gray area, that's a, that's a joke. That's a play on words, well done machine, big brain. So the gray area here is the gray area. When you've got gray, it will kind of partially show, partially hide, because it's not white or black. So, and that's where you can make some pretty cool effects with that, uh, like gradient ty type effects. The hack here to use is definitely that you can just search for a gray radiant filter background just type in black and white and then whatever type of filter you want to apply so for instance gradient go to images and you can literally just take any of these black and white images this one will go from left to right if you wanted a left to right gradient this one here is a like a, a north to south and you could just copy this gradient into the picture instead or even you may want like a vignette style uh, just like this which also would work pretty well but you may want black and white lines which is what i'm going to show as well so here's a variety of different black and white lines you could do so this is the point i'm going to speed up the video because i'm going to create two filters and masks here one will be like a gradient mask and one will be like a mask with lines and this will create two different effects on the audio visualizer one will be like a fade off on a separate audio visualizer will also then have like lines that are literally not showing so it will play, create like a dashed line Okay, so I've created the first filter, which is simply black on white lines. The white areas will be shown on the audio visualizer. The black lines will not be shown, and we'll see what that looks like in a second. But this is important because we now need to save as a PNG file. And we'll give this a name, line mask, and that'll be line mask.png. We'll now create the gradient one as well. And in this one, I'll actually, I'm just going to copy a gradient rather than use the gradient tool just to illustrate that it can be done kind of for free. Although I'm going to be using it in Photoshop, you can just paste it into Paint and do essentially the same thing. I've chosen this particular gradient here because it's got quite a harsh drop off. So it's heavy black into heavy white, only a short area in the middle of gray, which will mean that the bars quickly drop off into essentially nothingness. For anyone that's using Photoshop here, you can hold shift on a source and just pull it to the side if you want to stretch it. That's what I've done here. I'm going to click save on this. And again, I want to save it as a PNG. I'm going to call this gradient mask. Now at this point, I just want to sense check what they look like. So I'm going to quickly open up those files. That seems to look pretty good to me. White line mask. That also looks pretty good to me as well. So, so now we need to pop back into OBS Studio. This spectralizer here is already kind of cool. So let's just... It already looks kind of cool. It's not a terrible spectralizer, but we're going to make it a lot better. Before I make it a lot better, what I'm going to do is I want like a... I, want, I might want to be able to duplicate this. And therefore, to duplicate it, I want like a very vanilla version of it that I can then add colors to and filters and stuff like that. So I'm actually going to right click here on the properties. I'm going to take the color away from it for now. Keep it white. Just to do a quick test. Now, I'm also using another highly recommended tool, and it's a plugin, and I'll link it in the description below, and it's called Mirror Source. Now, what Mirror Source does is it allows you to take a copy of a source within OBS Studio and create, like, a clean copy of that. So, you're essentially, you can make changes to the copied version that won't affect the original, but the original changes would affect the new changes, if that makes sense. So, what this is, is if I apply a mask to the original, it will apply it to the, the Mirror Source, but if I I apply a mask to the mirror source it, it will only apply it to the mirror source and not to the original which is why i wanted to wind it back and make it vanilla on the original one and then it's the mirror source that i'll then make a load of changes to you'll see what i mean so what the mirror source allows you to do is add a new source called source mirror i'm going to call this source mirror uh, test one we now need to select the spectralizer source mirror 
just to test that this is the correct one. Yep, that's fine. Click OK on it. So we've now got a second version of this, but actually I want two versions of it. So I'm going to have another one here. So I'm going to add source mirror, call this test two, and I want the same source selected as a mirror. So we're going to make the changes on the two rather than the original, if that makes sense. So what, what this allows us to do is on this mirror source, we can make whatever changes we want. On this mirror source, we can make any different changes and they'll look completely different. But it also means if we want to change the original source, it will apply it to those two. We've essentially got like three sources here doing the same thing but we can make them fancy i'm just going to take the test one and drop it down i want to bring this fully across here then i'm going to take test two and bring this down we've got three versions of the audio visualizer here if i just click test you'll see they all do the same thing if i now make a change to the original for instance if i add a color to it pink the change is made to all three well, let's say on test one if i right right click on this now and add a filter mask or blend call this gradient and we're now going to browse to the gradient mask and add that if i click close on that one of these should now look different it's the middle one so you can now see there is a filter on this but it actually it's added the filter the wrong way around but you get the gist of what i mean illustratively here so i'm now going to tweak this to swap that round i want the bar to start visualized and then fade out rather than start unfading and fade in if that makes sense so to do this i'm going back into the gradient file and i'm just going to do it the easy way quick transform on this and literally just flip this around <laughs> like that and i'm going to file save as i'm going to save it over the file that i've already got so it'll just update this file which will then pull into that audio visualizer as a new mask and it should update there you go we can see here there's some slight fading what i'm actually going to do is go back into the original spectralizer i'm going to go into the properties I'm now just going to adjust this until the bars go a little bit higher they're going a little bit higher with the filter strength you can see we can see these start to filter off if i put that really high you'll see it's a lot more spiky so i'm going to leave it at 35 and then the bar height i might just reduce the height little bit okay i'm fairly happy with that we can now see more of that filter through the range there so we've added one gradient filter range to one of the audio specializers we've mirrored the audio specializer i'm now going to go into test two and i'm going to right click this i'm going to click on filters i'm going to add a filter which is a image mask i'm going to call this a line mask i'm going to browse to the second file the line mask and then see what that looks like Right, we can see that one already looks kind of cool. I'm, I'm fairly happy with how that one looks. So I'm just going to go back to the original, click on the properties and, and change the color back to white. So we now have three white audio visualizers. One of them's got a gradient, one of them's got lines through it, and one of them's just the original, okay? We want to brand this with colors, so we can right click and go on filters again to one of these, the gradient. I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to add a color correction here. Let's just select a color. We'll make this one like a pink color. Now, when we press play on that, we've got a gradient pink audio visualizer. I'm going to go to test two. I'm going to go to filters. I'm going to add another filter, which will be a color correction. And in this one, I'm going to select the color like a purpley blue. These should contrast each other and go fairly well with my branding. Now, when we press play, because we've added these two colors onto a mirror source, the original still is what it is. But we've now got a filter with a line on here and purple and on this one it's pink with a gradient filter hopefully you guys are following me so far on this so now we've got the option to like do some quite fun stuff with this you can add shading shadows you can have multiple versions you can duplicate it more rotate it make it larger there's loads of different things you can do for me right now just to demo some of these things that you can do i'm going to make this into a double reverse flip audio visualizer I, 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 like we're going to go into the matrix just briefly So on this bottom source, the test two, I'm going to right click this and go on to transform. I'm first going to flip it horizontally, which will put the, the main side of the audio visualizer on this side. But then what I'm going to do is right click it again and transform it. And we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. And what that's done is create a back to back version of that audio visualizer, which creates quite a cool effect, particularly when I just push those up right next to each other. We can make micro adjustments with the keypad here. We could put a line through this or some other filter or a picture, something that goes through the middle of this that contrasts it a little bit more, like a spike. Or you may even have like a sort of electric spike effect that you can put through that, which is like a wave file that you could stretch across. There's a number of different things you can do here. I'm just going to leave it simple for now, but I'm just putting it out there that you can do extra things like putting electric lines and stuff like that through there. 
We've now got two filters here that look kind of cool. We can select these together and we could resize them if we, if we wanted by dragging them in and out. And we could rotate them as a group, if that makes sense. So, so now we can start to get really clever. So because these two here have got specific filters applied to them, to the mirror version, they will hold their color and the original source won't be changed. So I'm now going to go into the original source, right click this. I'm going to add a filter. We're going to add a shadow effect here. So I'm going to click plus here. I'm first going to add a color correction. I'm going to turn this into a shadow by selecting the color and dropping this down to a kind of a shadow color. This will change the original one there. But as these two have got color corrections to specifically set them to a color that we've selected, they will hold their color. Even though the underlying color of them has gone from white to gray, color correction filter overrides them. Okay, I'm now going to right click this. I'm going to transform it. I'm going to flip it horizontally. I'm going to transform it. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. We've now got the basis here of a source that can be made into a shadow for this. So this in itself looks kind of cool because we've got like a two-tone color to this now. And we could even add like some sort of gradient overlay to the existing mask. So you can actually add more than one mask. We could have the gaps and then another gradient over that, which would look cool in itself, but we won't do that for now. So I think what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this mirror source. So we're actually mirroring a mirror here. So we're kind of in Inception briefly. So this one here, I want shadows coming off of these purple sections. I'm going to click to add another source. Source mirror. I'm going to click OK to add a new source mirror. And I'm going to select test two as the source that I'm mirroring. So we're actually mirroring a mirror source already. So this will, it will still be linked to the original. Because if you think about it, if the original changes fundamentally, it'll change the original mirror. And then that will change the next mirror. So there is a still a link with those. But it does give us some extra flexibility because we can add a new usage and put it behind the source and do some other stuff. So I'm going to just duplicate this and it will take an exact replica copy of the purple one. We need to transform this by rotating it 180 degrees and flipping it horizontally. So it's now matched exactly. Now before I put it and make the final adjustments to this, I want to make sure that this source mirror is behind two. Because I want the purple in front and I want the source mirror to be shadow if that makes sense so now that we've got it behind we'll just we'll just put it a little bit close to it but not exactly slightly offset that in itself creates quite a cool effect but i'm going to make some i'm going to use the d-pad just to slightly change that and now on this mirror source we can filter add another filter a color correction we can make this a color which is a shadow like that Press OK on that. You can see that's created a slight shadow effect on that. You can make micro adjustments to this. So after a little bit of fiddling around here, I've been able to just offset the shadow behind it. But I've had to resize it slightly to do that. So I just want to make sure that this actually matches well. Otherwise, the shadows will look really weird. Right. So that, all, that looks kind of cool already. But I just want to go to this and add another filter. There is a blur filter that you can add through the StreamFX plugin. So I'm going to add a blur filter onto the new source that we've made, the shadow source. This will be a shadow. We can make it really blurred or just like slightly blurred. And you see a preview of it here. I'm just going to make adjustment to that now. It's just got a slight blur to it like that. Now this is now just slightly blurred. And it almost like plays with the eyes a little bit. We've now got a filter on this. We've got a duplicate version of it, which is creating a shadow. We've got the pink version, which fades out into a filter. And we've got the original one here as well. Now, here's the beauty of this. We can hide the original. So I'm just going to hide the original source here. And these two will still exist. Okay, but we can still make changes to the original that will change the overall. So we can make plays on the full, which will then change everything. So let's go, because they're all linked together. If I right click this now and click filters. When, remember, we're changing the original one here, not the mirrored sources. So if I click plus and apply a blur to all of it. Look what this does. Kind of cool. You can adjust the blur. It can just be like this which is still, 
you'll see some differences when the music plays. Kind of a cool effect. So if you just wanted like a shading effect, a really loose shading, it works. But maybe you want something in the middle. Just want like a, an effect in the background. But actually, I want something a little bit better than that. I want something sharper. So I'm just going to blur it ever so slightly like this. Now, blurring it at three or four will create almost like a curved effect on the bars. And that looks really cool, in my opinion. So I'm just going to close that now. I'm going to hide the spectralizer. We've now got a spectralizer that will work with a blur, with shadows, with fade offs and all kinds of things like that. So what I'm just going to do here is now select all of these. I'm going to right click them and I'm going to say I want to group the selected icons. Now we can just grab this. Uh, we've hidden the spectralizer at the top. We can just grab the folder itself and make adjustments to the whole, the whole thing. Okay, so now when we right click this, we can transform the whole group rather than any one individual component. We'll transform this. Let's rotate it clockwise. And there you go. Now, obviously, this is personal preference. It's completely personal preference. So you may not like what I've created here. But for me, this is like a subtle undertone. Nice vibe to have as an audio visualizer that I know nobody else will have in the whole world. But hopefully some of the filters and the ideas that I've used to give you some ideas on what you can do with the audio visualizer using the mirror effects, with the shading effects, the shadows, the blurs, the filters, the masks, the gradients. There's a lot of different filters to add, but you can see the end result looks kind of awesome, right? Even if you don't like this effect, you've got to admit this looks kind of cool, right? Well, hopefully you found this really, really useful. Don't forget to click on the third in the series. So now we'll be adding the artwork and also the name of the song that's being played to really make this pop. And again, we can utilize some of the tools and techniques that we've used in this video in the next video. Brilliant. Guys, take it easy. Happy streaming.